keep it together. Keep it together. To kill him. A base. And we're being in... Welcome back to Horror Movies. In a few seconds, you're going to listen to a frightening tale narrated by me. Fear awaits you. Watch out and take care. The movie begins with the Apollo 11 mission to the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Immediately Neil Armstrong finishes his famous quote and sets to leave in the landing module. A robotic eye rushes across the lunar soil unseen and appears later to spot the landing module take off. It then goes back underground. After 20 years, NASA launches another space shuttle called Camelot with two astronauts aboard, Colonel Jason Grant and his partner, Commander Ray Tanner. Ray is asleep while Jason communicates with the NASA base on Earth. Jason later tricks him with an emergency alarm to wake him up when he needs him to be on the alert. He boasts excessively of his swiftness in quickly pushing the stop button afterward. He also makes fun of Jason for being old already, saying that Jason's flying days are over. Then the two begin to state the greatest names they have ever been called. Jason says he was nicknamed Einstein because of his fast thinking ability. Ray reluctantly mentions that he was called the penetrator because he always went the farthest at every target. Soon, they make radar contact. First, they think it might be a satellite in space but Jason realizes that it's too big to be a satellite. Chuck, at base, confirms this and explains to them that it's far out of the usual satellite tracks. He scans the radar signal and finds out that it is a very big ship. Then Chuck suggests for one of them to take a closer look and tells them it is very dangerous. Jason volunteers to go, and he suits up. Jason gets out of the shuttle to have a detailed look at the ship. The first thing he notices is that the spaceship is historical and not modern. Also, it looks abandoned in space. Next, Jason finds a reddish-brown pot of which its nature he doesn't know. And then, a mummified human corpse he believes to be of a historical astronaut. Taking these two things back to Earth, Dr. Burns analysis tells them the corpse is about 14,000 years old, which isn't just history, but prehistory. This means that there were astronauts 14,000 years ago who also explored the moon. But, about the reddish-brown pod, it is a tough alloy that has to be destroyed to uncover its content. However, Mr. Haskell doesn't seem to believe anything that they tell him even after showing him the evidence. He thinks it's just a stunt the organization is pulling to attract the president. So, he refuses to inform the president, against all proof, forcing Jason and Dr. Burns to want to put up a fight with him. Chuck calms them down and asks them all to leave the isolation room for some coffee. Immediately they all leave, the pod opens all by itself and a robotic eye pops out, with robotic tentacles, and goes on to hack into the NASA system. After that, it reconstructs the mummified corpse and the abandoned spaceship and begins fabrication of itself into a cybernetic body using the lab materials and the ancient corpse's parts. An unsuspecting lab technician later comes in to check, and she notices the body is missing. She successfully informs security before she's attacked by the cyborg and taken out. In the meantime, the crew is still arguing the matter of facts with Mr. Haskell but he's just hellbent on seeing it as a joke. Jason soon calmly tells him they have to go back to the moon to discover the ancient base. Jason tells him there is a possibility of uncovering great advances in space and weapon technology among others, but he still won't listen. But, when Ray tells him the Russians are attempting a space launch like this one, he takes it in immediately. Jason then suggests plans for the launch and says Major George Beck will be the orbital pilot while he and Ray take the landing. Just then, a security breach alarm alerts the entire building and everyone rushes after the cyborg to take it down, but Dr. Burns tries first to see if there is any chance that the alien might be friendly. Unfortunately, the cyborg injures him quickly and he shouts for it to be destroyed. It overpowers the military, but Jason comes up with a plan to go through the vent and attack it from above. Ray covers for him while he crawls, to distract the cyborg from noticing Jason. Once Jason gets on top of the cyborg, he blows it up. The next scene shows Jason doing push-ups in his house, with his son later joining him. They speak for a while and it turns out that Jason is divorced. So, his son always goes to visit his mom very often, and he would come back home to tell Jason about her. Jason gets a call from Ray afterward and he goes to meet him at a bar. He finds George there too. Ray first blabbers, but later informs him that the mission he suggested about going back to the moon has been funded. But, this time, they will be going on a search and destroy mission to the aliens' home base to look for other materials they could find like the one they recently brought. The Saturn V rocket launches their spaceship into space and the mission begins. After landing, 
Ray and Jason cruise a lunar rover to explore the moon in a bid to find the alien's base. Ray begins to get a little scared remembering how the one they took down to Earth built itself up. In the meantime, a robotic eye appears out of the lunar soil as it did during the Apollo 11 mission and spies on the two astronauts. Then it rushes under the soil towards their landing module and powers it down electrically. Ray and Jason later find the base and drive towards it. Outside it, they find the skull of an astronaut who has been there before them. Then, Jason remembers the guns they brought in the back of the rover. They get the guns and carefully enter the building. A little bit further inside the building, they discover many more skulls and bones, depicting the ruins of an ancient human civilization. Next, they open the door to a hall, and inside it, they find a woman in what is called suspended animation. She is preserved in a lifeless state until the covering above her is removed by Ray and Jason. At first, she thinks they are aliens and grabs Jason's gun. They later prove to her that they are humans. And, because she can't speak English, being from an ancient world, she can only tell her name, Mara, when spoken to. George soon notices that the landing module is being transferred by the aliens and informs the two others. When they set to leave the building, after Mara gets her space kit, they are attacked by a spider alien. Jason manages to take it down and they flee. They arrive at the landing site and find nothing. The module has been moved. So they follow the aliens tracks to try getting it back since it's their only way of getting off the moon. After trying for long enough, the lunar rover's battery dies and they have to walk the remaining distance. They find the module soon enough and also discover that these alien species, called Kalium, have waited 14,000 years for this moment. So, they plan to launch an attack together but one of the aliens shows up and first attacks them. They manage to take it down but another one appears from underground and takes Ray out before Jason later eliminates it. Now, George is under siege himself. He notices that his capsule is being pulled out of orbit and all the equipment also ceases until he later crashes. So, Jason and Mara are trapped on the moon without a way out. Jason then goes back to the rover and brings out an inflatable tent where he stays for a while with Mara. Mara later makes love to him in the tent. An alien soon rebuilds itself using Ray's body and tries to attack them in the tent but they manage to shoot it down. Just then, they are captured by two bigger ones and held captive in their ship. With time, while trying to cut them limb by limb, Jason manages to break free and destroy the robotic alien. Next, he gets Mara out too and they start to leave the ship. In the meantime, after the NASA base on Earth receives the information about the incidents on the moon, Chuck orders the launching of a rescue ship immediately to destroy the alien spaceship. Jason thinks of a plan to destroy the ship. After finding out that the landing module the alien stole is probably the only thing the aliens have needed for 14 years to complete the ship. They have now attached it to the ship. Upon finding it, Jason goes to activate its self-destruct feature. In the process, he gets attacked by a robotic eye that nearly electrocutes him but he propels himself off the ship instinctively by firing his gun in the forward direction. He shouts joyfully when he sees that it works. That's why he's called Einstein. When the self-destruction timer gets to zero, they are already at a safe enough distance away from the ship and they are taken back to Earth. The scene changes in time to Mara learning English and now able to narrate how she was trapped on the moon for 14,000 years. She says she was chosen to carry a warning to the alien species, but she never really wanted to go. Jason embraces her and tells her everything is over since they are now married. Back in space, since the reddish-brown pods are indestructible to a great extent, one of them survives the blast and it opens up later. In the non-visual part of the movie, Jason suspects that there could be some remnants left and puts a call through to Chuck to ask if NASA has been keeping track of all the debris. Chuck tells him not to worry that the entire species was destroyed in the blast. Spooked out? Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.